Hello everyone, this is a podcast on my channel with Zogon, Luke, whatever, what are you, just, what, what are you called now, Video Show Luke? Yeah, Zogon I'm just Luke. called Luke, <laughs> I, I'm called Luke, I don't want to be called Zogon, Ugh, that's, that's <laughs> disgusting. Zogon's cool. Uh, uh no. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I don't know if you know this, this is going on my channel. Uh, it's got, yeah, it's going right. on the, yeah, uh, I, I, well, thanks for telling me now, <laughs> but I knew. <laughs> <laughs> If you it's can't a tell, podcast. We're, yeah, we're podcast. We'll make it up as we go along. It's going well. Uh, the worst bit's always the start, so let's move along quickly. Uh, <laughs> to all my new Gorillaz <laughs> albums, we're big Gorillaz fans. Uh, Song Machine. Yeah, so season one, which is just... Oh, yeah. Not only season two, but I feel like seasons, that could that could go on endlessly. There could be like 30 of them, for all I know. Mm, yeah, um, that was I, I was strange to me as well when I saw that on Spotify. Yeah, the see, well, it's, it's got a really weird uh, title. It's like Song Machine, Strange Times. What? Oh, sorry. Oh, yeah, you're right. H- here it is. It's Song Machine, Season One, Strange Times, uh, Dulux. And there's no normal edition on Spotify. So uh, the, mm. the whole the whole bonus track. We'll get to the bonus tracks, but that whole that whole concept's weird to me. But um, but Strange Times is the name of the first track. Yes, and I think. Um. I imagine it's just called Strange Times because we're in Strange Times, you know. Mm. It's, it's kind of a, I guess it's a strange thing for Gorillaz because usually their albums are quite like, a, not they're not quite concept albums, but they're usually built around some sort of theme. Like probably the most obvious one, Plastic Beach, is all about like, you know, there's a full-on story and going on there where they go into the like, little plastic island or whatever. Mm. Um, but this one, just it's just singles really. It's just kind of track after track after track, no real sort of cohesion between them um but we've been listening to it for a while because they had their first song out was it the beginning of this year was it last year uh what was it momentary bliss i want to say i'm gonna i should really i should probably should have put the dates down i'm gonna say january or february maybe mm. um let's have a look momentary bliss sorry if you can hear my keyboard it's a bit of a clitty clackety uh, he's a gamer. He's got a gamer keyboard. <laughs> this is going on. Yeah, premiered thirtieth uh, of January, so just the end of January. So it's been a while. It's been a, almost uh, what's that like? Eight months? Ten months? Mm. Something like that. And yeah, uh, so it went momentary bliss, uh, desolate, yeah. Um, then it went uh, Aries. Yeah, Aries. Then then it was the song of Octavian, which I can't remember the name of it. Um, and I think that was before Aries, and then it was after that. It was Pac Man, I think. Yeah, yeah, um, <clears throat> and I hope there's gonna be some music videos for some of the tracks that haven't been uh, that haven't got them yet, especially on the mainline album. So that'll just be neat. But, um, yeah, the music videos are quite well done. I mean, they're always well done, but this time I could say that. They're very yeah, well yeah. Done. Also, they they don't look as because some of the older Gorillaz videos are they look like super expensive, and I know that was a big thing with um, uh, Demon Days and Plastic Beach. Like the videos and the tours for that song were like super expensive. Like some of the most hmm. Expensive tours and stuff uh, that our I bands think, ever done. I think that now, now, being a, I don't really like the album too much, but the music videos for it kind of set the scene for these ones, which are kind of in real life with the characters, kind of not too involved animation wise, not three yeah. D or anything, just two D. It looks very well done. It look, it's re- it's it's weird that it's not been done before on some of the earlier albums, like from, mm. but because it's it's such a good like. Just looks good, <laughs> especially yeah. seeing like the the guest stars and stuff, which was a big complaint on humans. Uh, now, now the thing with now, now is that um, they made that because they couldn't consistently get all those guests when they were touring with humans. Um, yeah. So they made the now, now to have some songs that was kind of just um, Damon Albarn. Um, but anyway, uh, yes, this album, Strange sure. Times. Yeah, you, you Strange start, Times. You start, strange Times. It is Strange Times, and it wasn't until I really read the album name, uh, Season 1 Strange Times, that I realised it was to do with Our Strange Times. Mm. And, um, I, I mean, I, I came in, I, I only listened to it, like, uh, two days ago, really. I don't know when it dropped, but it wasn't that long ago that I just listened to the entire album. Oh, okay. And, um, okay. and it, it sounds like, uh, it sounds like an endurance, this song. Because it's like going through the strange times they're in, and it, they they say what do they say um, that they're spinning around in the world at night, but there obviously has to be a dawn. So I was trying to figure out what that would be, but it seems like they're just going through what is now, and hoping 
out to the dawn. I don't know if I can get yeah. a bit too deep on the first song. No, well. but <laughs> but it seems like because they dwell on what is now, which is night. And I was wondering, what do you think the day would be? I guess because uh, I yeah I, I agree that the song's probably about the current kind of pandemic and stuff. Um, mm. So I assume this whole period could be considered the night sort of thing. And then the day would be just when things go back to normal, I suppose. Yeah. Because um, at one, I at think at the beginning of the song, there's a line about um, stuck on the twilight web that keeps on giving. And I think that's mm. meant to be like uh, stuck on the internet because everyone's stuck at home. They're just engaging in more social media and internet and stuff like that. So the twilight web that keeps on giving, which, which probably ties back into your thing about the night, like never ending kind of thing. Yeah. And, uh, Surgical Glove World as well. That's another like, probably about COVID as well. Everyone's. You know, oh, I didn't. That's a bit I didn't on the nose catch that. that. One, but yeah, I didn't. I mean, on the nose, I didn't catch it. Uh, near the end of the song, he talks about uh, spinning in golden hallways, which mm. I I I didn't really know what that meant. Um, uh, the faithful will be silent. I'm not really sure I, yeah, that, yeah. I mean th- those are the ones that stuck out the spinning around and the world at night and the golden hallways it is straight i mean that when they say until the sun comes up it seems like they're hopeful for the future mm. um, and it's like a downward spiral but it's kind of not a downward spiral it's kind of like a trying to get up to what they're going through now i mean that's kind of sounds strange but you know what i mean yeah a good uh good feature on this uh track so so every every track has sometimes multiple features uh, on it and that was a big complaint with humans that people had and I, I didn't like the features in humans too much either I thought they were a bit misplaced but mm. on this album like all of them are really good and the guy on this one is um, Robert Smith mm. from the The Cure The Cure yeah and uh, I think I think his hook and stuff is really good as we go into this I actually I was listening to it and because because the, the the video game Cyberpunk 2077 is out soon. Um, a lot of these songs, like heavily synth and heavily bassy, I've just been thinking about, oh, this would be good. This would be good in the game. If, if this is on the radio, this would this would fit in very well. And also, like, the mix between... I know it's not in here. Well, is it in here? There's a bit of auto-tune on? No, no, it's not. Is that, That's in one of the other ones, where there's a, a lot of auto-tune in some of the, the vocalists. I feel like it would be very good for a cyberpunky sort of soundtrack. Yeah, it's got a bit of almost an eighties feel. This one as well. Mm. Um, a lot of one, them go back to the eighties. Yeah. One little, I don't know if it's a complaint, but it's it's just something I notice um, with a lot of Gorilla stuff is that there's a lot of tracks that uh, 2D's vocals or Damon Albarn's vocals, however you want to look at it, um, uh, have this like kind of radio-y filter. I don't know what else to call it. Like it's quite. Um, it sounds like he's talking out walkie-talkie sort of thing. Yeah, like, I get you know it, I mean? yeah. Um, which is fine. I mean, it works well, and obviously Feel Good Inc. being one of the prime examples of that. Obviously, excellent song. But I feel like sometimes when it crops up on songs like this, I'm like, oh, I wish you were just like... Because I, I like him as a vocalist. I, I mean, it's probably one of my favourite vocalists of all time, so I don't really... If it, if it's, if it works, it does work. But sometimes I just wish I could just hear those clean vocals, you know what I mean? Um, mm. It's a weird. It's not a complaint as such, but every time I hear that, like, kind of crackly, like, <laughs> uh, I'm just gonna call it the radio voice. I'm a bit like, eh. <laughs> it's almost like a crutch. Well, not yeah. even a crutch, but it's. I it's, guess like it's like he's like doing it to, yeah. to kind of. Um, it's it's almost like he's trying to cover up his vocals a little bit. Mm. Um, but it's fine because uh, Robert Smith's vocals are really good, and obviously he takes a bit of the forefront. Um, but. That's, that's yeah, good little good little track, good intro to the. Considering these were all just singles, I think it works well as an intro to the album as well. Um, so yeah, that's pretty good. I like I like it a lot. Big fan. Um, next we got the Valley of the Pagans uh, with Beck. Uh, I'm sorry, I lost you there for a second, but we're back in the game. Oh, um, <laughs> but yeah, Beck. Sorry, I've uh, moved on to the next track. <laughs> yes, <laughs> You're right I, I did. You clock this immediately. I've never listened to Beck before, but I looked it up the other day and I listened to it. And I was like, "This sounds like the song Deborah." Do you know the song Deborah? Deborah. It's it's uh, featured in the popular film Baby Driver. Yeah, is is, is that the one? Um... Uh, Deborah, you look like a zebra. 
But yeah, yeah, yeah. It, because it, me, me and uh, this is uh, me and Dunzel were chatting about it <laughs> after watching it. But yeah, I did know. But that. but but the way he sings that is very similar to the intro of this song. Oh, is it? And I I, I clocked it quite quickly. I mean, I didn't realize it was actually the thing. I thought, like, oh, that's kind of similar style to Deborah. But I never really listened to them. But I just thought it was interesting that um, the way he sings is very unique. At the yeah. start of the song, I know it goes different uh, 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 as we go in, as we go into the chorus, but um, it's very unique. I mean, this song, I, I wasn't too sure about the meaning of the title. The, the I, I'm not sure about what that means, but I, it seems like a song about the Hollywood, like getting mm. into Hollywood, and the the negatives to Hollywood. Like, what is it like? Turning into a Hollywood star. And like yeah. later on in the track, 2D starts singing in like um, auto-tuned uh, vocals that seems like it's like being catered to the song um, from the executive, let's say. Um, but that's what I got. For, I don't know. West Hollywood is, is the, where they describe it as being placed. But I don't know where West Hollywood is from other Hollywoods. Um, but what did you think? Uh, I really like this one. Um Mm. Pro- I like it more than a. I mean, I like Strange Times. So I think this is a similar song in a way, uh, but I like this one a lot more. I really like um, uh, Beck. I think on his second, on his verse, maybe a second verse. I'm not sure, but the line about um, the plastic Cleopatra line on the throne of ice. Mm. <laughs> as soon as I heard that, I was like, "Ooh, that's that's, that's it's just that's it's." Good. First time I heard it, I was like, "That's a strange line." And then you kind of think about it a bit more. Like, oh, throne of ice is going to melt. Like, and it, there's a I think the next line's about um, dying battery life of saints. So you like you kind of piece it all together from that. Mm. I just thought it was a. I was like, "Ooh, good little, good little verse." Yeah, I think but, it, every every lyric is towards this idea of mm. when you go to Hollywood. You have a limited lifespan of what you're doing, and you're in the community, and 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 you eventually you're gonna like you're gonna you're uh, gonna succumb to that, yeah. yeah, and you're gonna be like taken over by the directors and stuff like that. That's what I got from it, but I I, I, I agree, yeah. I think because um, with the chorus, I feel so good to have a perfect soul. I feel so good to be in total control. Like it's kind of all the benefits, and then yeah, eventually it's all gonna crash, sort of thing. Um, yeah. Yeah. It's a good, good yeah. little track. Uh, I wasn't. Um, I always forget. I'm gonna. I'm actually gonna play it now because I always forget this next track, the Lost Chord. Mm. Lee oh, John. Yes, this one, yeah. yeah. Who who the hell is Lee John? That's my question. I, I don't tried, know, but he's great at singing. <laughs> I looked him up, and there is zero information about this man <laughs> that I can find. <laughs> I have no idea who he is. Why does he spell his name with three E's? I like, I, I just have so many questions. But uh, yeah, I think he's a. A reggae singer, I think. At, at yeah, some point. I, I did a Wikipedia on him earlier, but uh, I think that his voice is is incredible on this. Yeah, track. I okay. So you, you quite like this track, then? Yeah, I thought it was great. Well, I wasn't. I, I do like it. I don't dislike it. Um, but I think sandwiched between uh, Pac Man and Valley of the Pagans, I maybe kind of overlook it a little bit. But maybe. Um, I like the instrumentation, and I do, yeah, I like uh, Lee John. But I, I, I'll stop. I know, what, tell tell me your feelings. <laughs> oh no, I mean it, it's it's another one of those not eighties, but but older sort of sounding track, maybe two thousands, where mm. you go into Woolworths and you hear something similar, and it's <laughs> like it's poppy. It's got the piano that's it's kind of out of place but in place, and mm. then the synth as well. Um, it's yeah, got a bit I mean, of a vaporwave feel to it. Yeah. Way. But I think that all the lyrics are very like simple. If you read the lyrics online, yeah, they, yeah. They, they don't change much. It's just kind of like it's carried by the voice voices and the and the and the, the melodies uh, and instruments. Stuff. Yeah. But uh, yeah, I mean, I don't know. I I mean, I've written some lyrics down here, but I have no idea what they mean now that I've written them down. Um, I kind of assumed it was just kind of about drugs. <laughs> like, yeah, it's like yeah, pump me up to be happy stuff like that. There, there is. A, I googled the song, and the first one that comes up is actually like a orchestral eighteen. What was it? Uh, it's like a eight. I don't know. It was. It was a, a while ago that it was made. It was like the eighteen hundreds or something. Orchestral piece. And at the oh, beginning okay. of this song, it does have an orchestral it like bit in the intro. I don't know if it uses that at all, or it's just like coincidence that it has the same name. Um, I'm not really sure mm, what the lost chord means, but. <clears throat> maybe it maybe it has some sort of uh, similarities to that song. Um, I tried to look it up online, but no one was 
on the ball. Oh, looking up stuff about any Gorillaz albums always uh, <laughs> just people. I mean, the the songs are deliberately quite like obtuse sort of thing. Um, mm. So like people be like, oh, this song means this, and it's like, no, it means that. I mean, obviously we have <laughs> we, we probably do the same thing, but like. I don't know, sometimes you read someone's interpretation of a song and you're like, what the f- what? <laughs> uh, yeah. I have, a, I have an example of that later on, but it's, it's uh, the last track on the album, so I won't talk about it now. Um, I see. But yeah, I think... I, it's, it's alright. Lost Chord, I don't know. I I do like it, but it's definitely not one of, it's not in my top favourite tracks on the album. I liked the ending when it was talking about, um, what was it? It was talking about freedom or something what was it it was, it was something i want to be free or something and then you hear like the seagulls in the background it's like oh, oh fly yeah, away yeah. fly away be free please there's lots of uh, add another very... e to your name <laughs> yeah <laughs> the more e's the better there's yeah. a, there's a lot of really good uh, production choices on the album like just little little moments here and there um, mm. mixed in really well um but yeah so... um, you happy to move on yeah, yeah, we're going to arrive at Pac-Man now. I know that you were, you were talking to me about Pac-Man quite a lot when it came out. Mm. Oh, I've been a, I've been on the, I've been a Pac-Man fan since the, <laughs> since when it came out. <laughs> Everyone else arcades. was like, oh, I'm not too keen on it, and I was like, no, this is this is a great track. And well, you know what? I I thought the same thing. I wasn't keen, and yeah. then I listened to it again with some proper headphones, and and that's a pretty good song. Yeah, and it's one of the best on the track on the album. I hate. When any song s- talks about video games or samples video games, oh, yeah. I don't know why. I just have a. I think it's because there's a lot of rap stuff that's like it's a big cliche to be like, oh, he's growing big like Mario, like some shit like that, <laughs> or like, oh, she um, played Xbox, me. She's yeah, yeah, like, Or there's a Kanye Atari. line where he, s- he says something like, um, oh, it's all like Mario, it's all a game kind of. It, it, I just really <laughs> don't like it. I don't know what it is, but so I'm, when I hear Pac Man, I'm like, oh. God. Yeah, not Pac-Man. there's not even it, it's just Pac-Man. There's nothing else to the song. Is it, I mean, the, the title? It is just Pac-Man, which and is it's confusing to search for. Samples Pac-Man noises. Uh, it has a lot of references to Pac-Man, but it, I, it's done well. It's not very. It's not on the nose. There's a lot of like. Uh, I think oh, I can't. I wanted to write a lyric down for some reason. I didn't. It's something like um, turning blue like a ghost or something. And mm. yeah, it's just it's just a good little tune and Schoolboy Q. Um, He's from uh, Top Dog Entertainment uh, record label with the one, the only Kendrick Lamar on it. Uh, oh, really? Yeah. So all and all of those guys, they they release music quite slowly. Um, they have mm. albums every two to three years. So getting a verse from anyone uh, from that record label is like it's a big treat. And uh, he's really good on this song. Um, yeah, I think it's it's quite. This one has like a. Um, it's two sides of the of the emotions, I guess, because two D's like, well, as he says in the song, he's stressing out, mm. and then and then on the other side, it's schoolboy being like more um, calm. Well, he's not being calm; he's just saying like, "I'm going to build myself back back up again." Yeah, level from when up, he you know? fell. Yeah, and it's quite good to. It's like it's like even like a like a hero's journey sort of thing where you you go down and then halfway through the song, and then you go back up again. You're like, oh yeah, we could do it. Yeah, it's really yeah. good. Yeah, it's definitely um, it's definitely one of my favorites on the album, um, and I think yeah, I definitely agree to the theme of uh, yeah. I'm trying to. I don't know why I didn't write <laughs> more lyrics down uh, <laughs> for some reason. I guess I just thought, oh, Pac Man, I could just wing that. But uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, I've been a big fan. I like them. There's a, we haven't really spoke much about the music videos. But, uh, I suppose we haven't. The other songs don't have. Oh, Strange Times has a music video where they're in space. Um, but I like the video I on this one as well. That one. Uh, they're, they're oh, I, did, I didn't know there's a. I, oh yeah, sorry. This one does have a video. Isn't it? He's going down to play Pac-Man in the basement or something. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and I think that kind of like well burst, but... Pac-Man's kind of like his uh, his vice. Maybe it's like a sort of like a substitute for like drugs or something. Like he's addicted to you know the Pac-Man, playing the games, eating the pills, yeah, and all that good stuff. I think that you get a lot more. If I mean, sometimes with music videos. I mean, what was it that? Um, we, what was the song that we really liked? It was uh, oh, I've forgotten it. The one where they're on a boat in the music video. That's uh, No, no, no. Uh, sorry, it's not Gorillas. It oh. was um, they're on a boat. Uh, I'm on a boat. Blanked now. <laughs> no, no. We we like the music. Uh, the, the the the. Oh, the see music. you again. Yeah, see you again. Yeah. 
and and the music video came out and it wasn't really what i expected they're on like a boat or something and it was it was weird it was kind of not very well done as well um but listening to the song before that i was like oh this is great this is this this is what i imagine it to be in my mind and then i saw the video and i'm like oh this isn't what i thought it would be at all but with gorillas because it's kind of vague in what the meaning of the songs are in the video as well it kind of adds to the personality of the song as well um i think that that's quite uh apparent with aries where it's like what is going on but i don't remember the the pac-man too too well but that's kind of what i mean most of it's just a pack it's just to the playing pac-man and (laughs) yeah they unplug it at the end that's that's about it that's good which uh talking of the videos i like that it's not um Again, that's it's not a crazy ridiculous thing. Like the video is good enough; it did, probably didn't cost like an arm and a leg to make, uh, and it's just a good little mm. song, good little video, and that's that's all you need. You don't need this crazy like ongoing story where all the music videos fit. And if you watch them all together, you get this like little yeah. I think that's tale. what that's what Gorillaz fans think it's going to be about because you have to like, oh, what's two D going through here? Does this mean? Mm. that 2D is going to lead the band or something I don't know something crazy because they have this massive lore behind it because it's yeah. kind of like yeah I mean it is a cartoon I do still no that, do a movie but that stuff is still there but it's not mm. like I don't know because I think I think with the the Plastic Beach stuff they literally just ran out of money so they, they, they couldn't finish the videos for that one because mm. um, it was just too expensive so I'm glad but it's not sorry, it's not in your face yeah I'm glad it's taken a bit more of a, a backseat kind mm. of thing um, it's not like like a Marvel's Avengers where you're like, ah, yeah. this makes sense because of this because it's spelled out for you. It's just so, like little hints. Our next track is a uh, chalk tablet. Are you, are you done with school? Chalk by the way? tablet towers. Yeah, I'm, I'm fine. Yeah. Pac-Man. <laughs> yeah, chalk <laughs> tablet towers. Um, again, this one. Uh, oh, oh no. Actually, sorry, I was getting mixed up with another song. I uh, the best thing about this song is the hook, in my opinion. They're like, oh, 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 oh. <laughs> I think oh, it's yeah, that, that was quite good. I, I, I do like, um, what's the name of the woman on it? Uh, St. Vincent. Saint Saint yeah, St. Vincent. Vincent. Yeah, she's she's very good in this one. Mm. Um, I do wish she had a bit more to do on the song. She's mostly on the just the the hook saying that one little bit. I wish she was doing like a, I don't know, just a bit more involved with the song, but is what it is. But, good, good song, so. Hmm. And it seems like, I mean, it's obviously got some sort of drug connotation because of the, you know, tablets, yeah. chalk tablets, town, white tablets. I mean, I was thinking interge- indigestion because you have chalk tablets when you've got indigestion, <laughs> but, but I think it might be a bit more sinister than that. Yeah. Um, <laughs> that would be a good song, I'd listen to that. <laughs> but, I mean, what they're, it seems like what they're saying in the song is they want to get back to the way things were or to the person they're with. But that could also mean more just drugs. Uh, yeah. So I, I'm not I'm I'm not sure the meaning of this one. Um, but they're both in agreement, 2D and Saint Vincent, about what they want, which is back to the way things were. Yeah, I think um, that that's quite a ongoing theme on the album. Is like, is this about drugs? Is this about like a failed relationship? Because mm. it's, it's, I mean, it's quite common in music that it can be interpreted in either way. Um, I mean, it could be about our reality right now, going back to the way things were. That's true. Yeah, that's true. It's hard to, because I think with strange times that was recorded a bit later on, um, probably in the midst of the pandemic. Uh, mm. Whereas obviously, momentary bliss and Desolée were pre-pandemic. Yeah. So like, it's it's weird looking at the songs and trying to like, oh, was this was this <laughs> was this recorded yeah. this year? Was it recorded was this, last year? Yeah, influenced by it or not, we don't know. Yeah, um, it is interesting. Especially, um, I mean, because you can't even look at the song order because "Strange Times" was one of the latest songs, but it's the first track on the album. So. Yeah, I, I actually have a problem with that because I, I, I mean, I'm going to talk to you about it, but, but I think "Momentary Bliss" is it should have been the first song because it was it's pretty good. It, it's I mean, well, we, 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 yeah, we'll get there. We'll get there. We'll get there. Um, <laughs> I don't have anything else to say about this fucking. Uh, I think this it's good, it's a good song. Uh, good anyway. song. It's upbeat, even though the, the the what they're talking about is kind of downbeat. But yeah, it's a good yeah. little jam. Um, yeah, and so on this on Chalk Tablet Towers, the feature was quite understated. But the next song, the features are very much <laughs> at oh, the yeah. forefront. Uh, obviously, um, 
the big one here is Elton John. Uh, I think the spectacle of having Elton John on a Gorilla song is just like it's a pretty crazy thing, right? Like, uh, mm. that's probably the he's probably the biggest name on the album. Um, yeah, I think so. And uh, it's just I, just before we get talking about it, I was looking up uh, on Genius, and someone posted this. I don't know if it's true because um, I couldn't bother to verify it because it was about. 20 minutes before we started this, I just happened to ah. read this. <laughs> so I'm going to read it out to you. Um, so this is supposedly from an interview with um, uh, Damon. Uh, so mm. it says, When I was seven, I got picked up outside my primary school in Elton John's Pink Bentley Phantom 5. Uh, which which I also found out. So the, the Phantom, the Pink Phantom was his car. Um, yeah. And it says here that he explains how this person got a hold of it. So it was his percussionist driving it, Ray Cooper, who happened to be a family friend. And the reason he had this amazing car was because Elton John's band had gone on tour earlier in the year in what was the Soviet Union. And he had not been paid in money. He had been paid in coal and logs. And he was finding it hard to get the money back. Uh, But Elton, he didn't have the money to pay his musicians because he was in the fucking Soviet Union, I guess. Uh, So he paid them in gifts. Uh, So that's how... This uh, Ray Cooper got hold of uh, Elton John's Pink Phantom, and then, through pure coincidence, a seven-year-old uh, Damon Albarn <laughs> got a little ride in it. That's uh, that's very strange. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but I can see Elton being strange enough to go take jobs with the Soviet Union to get coal. <laughs> so it's, and it says, "I told Jamie the story a couple of years ago. I don't know who Jamie is." Uh, and he said, you have to contact Elton and make a song about it. So <laughs> that, that might be what this... I mean, that might all be a lie. I don't know. I didn't fact check it, but I don't know. Uh, I, I, have, I have mixed feelings about this song. I, I I did. Okay. But I've grown to like it now. I, I, I do like it a lot. Because the main thing that was turning me off... I mean, it's quite loud. It's quite bombastic because there's so much stuff going on. Um, but... It, is is the way to pronounce his name Black? I, yes, I it's Six yeah. Lack. It's, it's um, uh, Black. Well, yeah. So he's in the track, and and this is one of the things I was talking about, where it's like very very uh, auto tuned, mm. um, and I'm not really a fan of it. But I kind of like the the idea of having Elton's voice, which is unique in itself, and then having Two D's voice, which is kind of like kind of depressing, and then having the auto tuned like Black's voice. And it kind of, it's all like jarring, but yeah. it's all, it kind of, and I, I, I like the instrumentals, instrumental for this track as well, with the piano and, and everything. Whoops, a daisy, we just had an uh, issue with <laughs> our recording thing, so we suddenly got cut off. Uh, whoops. Whoops. Technical uh, difficulties. I can't remember what we were saying. Uh, uh, Elton John and Black and 2D are making a little song, and it's called The Pink Phantom. Yes, and... On paper, this song shouldn't work at all. Um, mm. Just, uh, it's bizarre to me that I don't know. I don't know who came up with this. I'm going to assume this is this got Damon Albarn's fingers all over it. I don't know if I'm saying his name wrong, but I've, I've always said it like Albarn, but I don't even know if that's how it's pronounced. But anyway, was like oh, I've got Elton John on the track. Oh, I'll get Black on it as he as well. Like, <laughs> <laughs> well, it, I think it's quite bold to say Elton and Black, like. Mm. You would think that you would put Elton and 2D and those two together would seem like they'd make a perfect song. But then if you yeah. throw Black in there, it's like the complete opposite. It's like, it, it's it's insane. Yeah. And but I it is kind Go for it. I had a similar reaction to you when I first heard this song. Oh, like, cause I, this has got a video as well. This one was released as a single like right before the album came out. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, and I listened to it and I was just like, oh, this just doesn't work for me uh, at all. But I kept listening to it, and I was like, I can feel it growing on me, but no, you're not swaying me. But yeah, the song's really good. Yeah, <laughs> it is. I'm glad you turned as well. It's it, like a, it took it's like me a, a dream sequence that's just like, I, I don't know, it's, it's, it's like a weird fever dream. That's what I could describe it as. Well, I think so 2D's vocals are quite like, a, they've got like a little bit of kind of vagueness to them, like... He's talking about something, but it's one of those things where he's talking about something, but he's not really giving all the information uh, out, if that makes sense. So, like, uh, he says, I was on my way to the Phantom Five, the one you gave away. Like, that sounds like it's about the story that uh, yeah. uh, Damon Alva was talking about. But in another way, it can, be, it can be interpreted in different ways, but Black's verse is quite straightforward. Like, 
trying to tell you that I love you, but I'm choked up. You forgot, and that makes me still that makes me feel like no love. And then Elton John's chorus is so like, like so bombastic and uh, mm. like I love the like in the sky made of diamonds got kind of like a Beatles feel to it almost like a yeah yeah. And then towards the end, then we get uh, the outro. So we have got two D and Black's vocals like overlapping each other. Uh, and then before all this is Elton John like introducing this, and so that they're all <laughs> they're all singing at the same time. It's yeah. all chaos. That uh, that is where the like song goes crazy. And like again on paper, that just shouldn't work. I should say that to you. You should go, oh, that that you know, stop. I don't, yeah, I don't understand how <laughs> they've managed to make it sound because because as well, there's obviously all the instrumentation going on, but it's all mixed so well. Mm. None of it's overbearing. None of it's too quiet. Nothing. It's all just sounds great. And I don't understand how. <laughs> yeah, and but it, I, it's strange that our first opinion of the song was this is bad. And I don't know... Uh, yeah, I, I'm still interested. I'm going to continue listening to it and try and figure out why. <laughs> I think but it's it just is still like, a mystery. Uh, I think it's just because, like... Um, it, you, it's, 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 all, it's not overwhelming, but it's like you listen to it and it just doesn't sound... You're like, oh, it's like when you try a weird food for the first time. You're like, oh, I don't know about this. Like, I don't know about yeah. the texture. But then, as you as you let it sit for a while, you're like, oh, yeah, this this does work. Yeah, I can imagine. I don't think this is going to be uh, too popular of a song. Like, it's not going to be one that's you know like uh, pointed at as like a you know like a banger on the album or anything. Mm. But, well, this could have been the song that got more people into Gorillas because I know that. Drop off for Gorillaz probably, it's probably been happening for a while since like the, their first album was such a big success. It seems like I'm assuming they're more popular now than they were before, but but that's because there's more people in the world. Uh, I just don't I don't hear people talk about Gorillaz as much as I used to. Well, this song could have been the one if it was if Elton was the main focus of this song, it could have appealed to more people who like Elton John, which is a lot of people. Yeah. But because I guess they got... could have done. They could have just done an Elton John song with a little bit of two D sprinkled yeah. in it. It was quite bold that they they chose Black to go with it. Mm. And yeah, again, I, at first I was like, "Oh, you've got this fucking auto tune mumble rapper." Like, doesn't sound good at all. But the more I listen mm. to it, then you could. There's a real emotion to like his verse. Yeah. Uh, probably more so than both two D and Elton John. Like, I could. You can really. Hear, he really does sound like choked up. Like, mm. <laughs> it's it's yeah. What a good little good, tune! Um, good little tune, yeah. So next up, we got uh, uh, you Aries. Done? Are you done with uh? Oh, I always yeah, ask this, I'm, but, yeah, I'm done. Aries is Aries. a good little tune. Um, I yeah, I I got a word to say about Aries, okay. and uh, it's not nothing bad. It's just I thought. I mean, I don't know. Maybe I thought that because because when they first released the Gorillaz songs for 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 this album uh, individually. They did a preview of the next song, and I thought, "Oh, this is going to be the best song on the album." Because we just it, we we get went through what was it, "Momentary Bliss," then "Desolate," which I think are one of the two of the best songs on there. Mm. And then uh, Aries came, like showed a little snippet of or it, it vocalized a snippet. I don't well, know it's the uh, it's the little I remember it. They showed a little coming um, up next, yeah. That, that little bassist, uh, no, sorry, that little bass, little like boom, mm. boom, 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 boom. And I thought, boom. "Oh, this is this is going to be a great little song." And I do like it, but it's 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 just it's kind of just a new order track. Yeah. And yeah. And not. I mean, I know that that was the big problem with um, humans, that a lot of the human songs doesn't seem like gorilla songs, um, and I could see that. But that was kind of what I went into humans with, like a this is more yeah. collaborative uh, album, and I really enjoy humans. But this one, I do like the song. It's just. It's very new order. I can see that, yeah, because I, I think I think that's uh, I don't know, like, because I, I I haven't listened to too much uh, Joy Division or New Order or anything like that. Mm. Um, but yeah, that that kind of rhythmic bass to it, um, definitely just screams. <laughs> mm. uh, well, yeah, it screams that... Peter Hook. Um, I, yeah. I I I kind of agree to that. Um, it's not. A lot of people love this song, and I do. I do like it, but it's definitely not in my favorite tracks. Um, I, I could see why people like the song because it's very yeah. in the style that it is. Like, if you like that sort of music, you'll love this song. Yeah, it does. It feels like a bit of a modern spin on a 
on a, on a New Order contract. So mm. I guess if you do like, if you're a big uh, New Order fan, then this, this is going to be like this is going to sound like incredible. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, and it's got a very good music video. Yes, um, I, I'd still re- recommend it. It's just that the takeaway from it was was what I said, you know. <laughs> But I do yeah. like the synth and the, and the the very like not heavy bass in a in a dance music way, but in a in a like the the bass guitar is like dum 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 dum. Well, it's not it's good. not really playing the, the part of the bass really. Like it's mm. the, it's almost being played as like the lead guitar. Yeah, um, yeah. I was so. actually confused because I I was trying to figure out if it was the guitar or not when I was listening to it. Yeah, it hits a lot of the notes. Yeah. Um, are we done? Are we done with that? I guess we have so much else yeah. to say about um. So this, this you, you might not like my, my what I'm about to say about this Friday the Thirteenth track, but when this first came out, I really, I didn't, I didn't hate it. Uh, but I was like, oh, this just isn't what I'm looking for. But now that I've, I've had time to sit on it, <laughs> I really like this song. <laughs> it might I be, actually, it might I be might, one of my favorites. <laughs> I might be in the boat uh, of when you first listened to it because I've only got through it a couple of times. I've only listened to it a couple of times now. Oh, okay. And I'm in this. I'm in the boat that. I'm not much of a fan of it. Well, uh, you might not grow on it actually, because it is a it is a bit too. Uh, I'm going to just call it Octavian heavy. Like, there's no 2D on it at all, pretty much. Hmm. Um, but yeah, I don't know what it is. But the more I've listened to it, and I think maybe it's to do with the placement in the album. So we've had like a, you know, quite a bombastic intro. Then we've had like we're kind of quieting down a bit with the Pink Phantom and Aries, and then I don't know the same come out like a. The kind of like smooth instrumentation and like Octavian, he's, he's got a very strange delivery. Uh, we, we almost just sounds like he's talking quite calmly, and then it's like, I don't know, I it's sank about it, clicked with me, and I was like, I really like this. <laughs> hmm. uh, I mean, it, you're right about the 2D stuff, it was strange not hearing him until the isn't it like the very end he pops in? Yeah, he has a little like a uh, little moment, but Octavian is uh, is very dynamic on this track, I'd say, just like. The, he he goes through different types of of um, singing, I guess, but it is very heavily relied on your auto tune at some points, and I'm yeah. just like, not my sort of not my sort of thing. I don't know what, just like the little moments on like uh like the I talk too much, man, and then just like the I don't know, it's it's I don't really know how to explain the feel of it, but saying it really did just just switch on, and uh, I can see why people, I can definitely see why. Uh, People might not necessarily like it, or just think mm. it's boring, or like just not want to. When I say it's one of my favorites, I think uh, it's on the lower end of my favorites, but <laughs> mm. I think I like it more than uh, uh, most people. But and and you know what's uh, even more interesting is that I've seen people um, people aren't a fan of Dead Butterflies, and I I really like the song. I really I like it a lot. Um, well, you're gonna have to do most of the talking because I didn't write anything down for Dead Butterflies. Well, because. Let me tell you about the butterflies. It. Let me tell you about the butterflies. So, um, there. Sorry, let me get to my notes as well. Um, so, one of the weird things about this song, or straight off the boat, is that um, it's one of the only other songs with an outside uh, producer on it. Uh, I might be wrong about that, but um, we get Mike Will made it, who's a uh, who's done like a million songs of various rappers and stuff like that. Um, uh, we hear his little production tag at the beginning, uh, which is mm. was really weird hearing a gorilla song. Uh, little things I like about the song is I like at the beginning you can hear uh, Damon just going, "Oh, can we loop that uh, piano bit?" I think that'll sound like. <laughs> That's just yeah, I song. do like that bit. Yeah. Uh, also, I was talking about two um, D vocals earlier, like how sometimes they're quite. Um, it's got that radio kind of quality to them. Yeah. Um, where on this song they're like forefront. Uh, he's like singing his heart out. It sounds really good. Um, and then uh, there's a lot going on in the songs. So we've got two features, and we get to this. Um, uh, what's her name? It's uh, uh, I hope Ro- I'm saying Roxanne? this right. Roxani Arias. Yeah. Uh, who starts off a so- uh, bit in English, and then it turns into like Spanish. And immediately, I'm like, oh my god, that sounds great. Yeah. And then uh, we get Kano's verse, and I'm not. Uh, Kano's a grime artist, a quite a um, influential grime artist, and I- I'm not a big grime fan, um, but. His 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 whole bit on the song is great. I like like there's tons. I like it. My my favorite bit, probably the whole song, is that he he says, 
But memories lift me up, but still a man's tipping... Um, sorry, fucking hell. But still a man's tears dripping down onto these photographs of what we used to be. But over time, the puddles turn into a sea, and I'm hoping to myself, you cry a stream, and I I was just surfing on your grief. And, like, wow. the whole imagery there and the way it all, like, connects, I'm like, I mean, I live for that shit. <laughs> like, you know, <laughs> it reminds me of a... There's a Tyler song, Tyler Crater song, where he's like, um... He's talking about, like, uh, oh, we built up this house, then you evicted me because of your new tenant, and, like, the way that all links. It reminds me of that, and, yeah, it's really good. And uh, uh, these guys, actually, they collaborated on um, Plastic Beach. on a oh, really? wh- White Flag, I think the song's called, and that, that's an odd song as well. But, um, yeah, I was really... Because so, I was like, oh, my God, this song's great. And I went online, like, ah. Oh, people must love this song. And they're, they're, people don't like the song. And I was like, oh my God. Like, <laughs> I was like, what's going on? Um, but yeah, uh, I think I think it's great. But yeah. it is overshadowed a little bit. Mm. Because next... I, sorry, did you, oh, want, yeah. did you want to say I, something I, like that? I was just going to say, I, I, I do like the way Kano uh, just... I, I like the way that he he rap, is it rapping? Yeah, I guess it's rapping in this yeah, movie. Yeah, yeah. Grime, Grime still... Usually Grime is... Um, a faster tempo and stuff like that, mm. um, and is yeah, obviously it's uh, British. Um, yeah, but but you said about Roxani um, talking in what is it Spanish? Was it? I'm pretty sure it's Spanish. Yeah, I could be wrong. But yeah, which leads us to the next track, which I you were trying to do, but I stopped you. Desolé, which I think I don't know if you agree with me, is the best song on the album. Uh, Desolé is probably my favourite song of the year unless something yes. better comes out uh, I, Desolé is fucking amazing uh, <laughs> I, I yeah. thought you liked uh, Momentary Bliss more but oh, no. you know what, they're, they're both fucking mm. they're both I, at the tail end of this album and they both are fucking great yeah. <laughs> I, I would listen to Momentary Bliss more more than uh, Desolé just because it's my sort of song but I can, I can see that Desolé deserves to be the best song on this album it's yeah. so beautiful. Yeah, Desolate is crazy good. Uh, mm. One one thing I found out um, looking this up, this is the third time. Um, all right, I'm, I'm probably going to pronounce this wrong, but I'm going to do my best. Uh, uh, Fatumata Diawara. Uh, it's the mm. third time uh, she's collabed with Damon Albarn, not on Gorillaz projects. Um, I think they did stuff one of her albums and maybe something else. Um, but oh, yeah, yeah, they. Both of them are um, incredible. Uh, who would have thought that, like, saying like French lines in a like British accent would sound so good? Yeah, <laughs> like, it's it's so well done. It's it, it's I don't know the way they mix it as well. You don't. It, it's not like turned away by the French, and it, it's it's it just adds to it. Yeah. Do you want to hear my uh, interpretation of the song? Oh, yeah, go for it. Is, I got the lyrics up here, so you better convince it is, me. It, so I, I mean, I've been listening to this song like nonstop since it came out. It's, I, I love this song, mm. uh, hands down. It's, it's, it, it, this is my favorite song. Yeah, I doubt if if something better comes out in between now and December, I'll be very surprised. But yeah, you never know. You never know. Kendrick's meant to be releasing an album at some point. You know, who knows? But so who knows? I was thinking about it, and then it, it clicked with me. So. Here's my here it is here's my here's my big my big interpretation right. My idea is that there's two languages in the song right. There's the French and the uh, English, and I think because I tried looking up translations of the lyrics and I couldn't really find any, so it might be like a kind of like an African language that I'm not too familiar with. I'm not too sure, but um. What the just the what do you mean the desolé and the complicated? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, like, oh, uh, well, mostly uh, uh, for tomatoes bits. Uh, called Teria Manadia. Oh, I, I see that. Yeah, I, I don't know. If I couldn't find any sort of translation. I'm going to Google it now. Maybe something will crop up. But it just comes mm. up with the Desolée song. <laughs> mm. so, but uh, Desolée means sorry. Yeah, that Is means that sorry right? in French. Yes. Yeah. So here's uh, here's here's where we get into it, sort of thing. So my idea: this acts as like a communication barrier between two mm. people in a relationship, and not in a literal sense, like in a sense of two people in a relationship, and in those going wayward sort of thing yeah but they can't communicate effectively how to like solve this problem or break up wherever they need to do just because they're not good at talking right they're not good at communicating so not that they're literally talking in different languages but they just can't really 
you know, they can't understand each other's body language and stuff like that, right? Yeah. Um, so, but my interpretation is like, um, so, uh, Desolé said over it like, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. And then uh, two of these lines like, I'm trying to hold on to you, I don't know what to do. They're saying it. Yeah, they, yeah, they can't communicate so, properly. In the middle of the song, we get the breakdown of the instruments, right? You know, it gets mm. all a bit, gets quite chaotic. And I, I see that as like, um, that's the kind of uncomfort of like stepping out of your comfort zone, getting into that kind of uncomfortable area where you're like stepping up to say something. And it all gets a bit chaotic and crazy. But then it kind of swoops back around and it swells into like the back into the song with like these like strings, like these strings start like swelling. It's great. Oh, like, no, great song. But. Yeah. <laughs> Then uh, 2D's talking in French, and I see that as he's broken the the kind of communication barrier, and he's put in the effort ah, to like kind of like, right. you know, uh, and then towards the end, uh, I'm really hope I'm not saying her name wrong because I would feel fucking devastated. Fatou <laughs> <laughs> uh, Mata, so she starts singing her heart out, and like she's got these like crazy high vocals, and I think that's that's kind of her like, you know, feeling the kind of freedom of whether or not. Whether or not this relationship has worked out or broken up, I'm not too sure. But like, that's her kind of like release sort of thing because this communication bridge has been uh, established, as it were. But um, I don't know. Maybe I'm completely wrong. But that's it. <laughs> when looking at the lyrics, it still says like, it's still at the end. They're still saying desolate. It's still saying sorry, sorry. Yeah. And then I think Tootie says, "The day I left, the day I left." Ah. Oh no, no, that's that's the woman. Sorry. That's yeah. She's saying it's uh, DLM. Which, when you Google that, um, I think it came up. It says it was like a, a sp- Spanish or, or Italian when I looked it up. I don't know. Oh, right. I don't know what's going on. Uh, but maybe, yeah, I don't know, maybe it's a struggle to get along. And I, and I, I do really think your theory is quite good, actually. Um, but yeah, I, st- I mean, but the saying sorry at the end of the song is, is still like an unknown like. Ending. Well, I guess because it's gone from she's just saying sorry, but Tootie's not hearing it. But now she can say sorry. And that's mm. she can establish from that because now it's like desolate. Like, oh. but yeah. Regardless, even if that's if you think that's complete fucking bollocks, right? The song is just it's just so good. Yeah. Um, it, the version on the album's uh, it's an extended version. It's slightly longer. Um, mm. it's the same as the music video. The music video is that long. Y- yeah, and I'm not sure if I. L- I mean, I don't dislike it, but like, it does. You could tell it's like the single. The song ends. And it ends right, and it goes on to next to wherever the hell you've gone. But um, to me, it just sounds like a, a YouTube video where the title cards come up to like, oh, yeah. now watch uh, Feel Good Ink. <laughs> you know, you know what I mean. And uh, I hear that, and I'm like, eh, but yeah, the, the... I, I I agree. I think that it should just use the normal version. I don't know why it's using the extended version. Yeah, I guess uh, maybe yeah, maybe because the... it's the deluxe. Yeah, the the the, mat, the the song is good enough that I don't really mind just listening to the instrumentation because it's really good. But like, yeah, I I do think it's a bit more concise with the single version. But it's not like that version doesn't exist now. So mm. you know, well, I'm looking at the tape I've got and it says it's just SLA. It's not the extended version. So oh, I think okay. that if you buy it non extended, uh, non deluxe, you get the normal track. I might track uh, track. What am I saying? Check my vinyl. See if uh, I think that's Ooh, that's got that's vinyl. Got the, that's got all the songs on it. So um. Oh, does it? You don't have to buy all four tapes to get all the songs on on your your, your Walkman, do you? Wait, let's talk about momentary bliss, and then let's talk about that right? <laughs> before we talk about the bonus tracks, because I'm I'm curious now. But uh, momentary bliss is also fucking really good. Um, yeah. <laughs> I mean, this song came out, and then I think I think uh, I remember listening to this, and then I was like, we we I remember being in your car listening to it, like for the second or third time, and we were both like, this is good. It's a good little yeah. song. <laughs> it's ah, it's so like kind of like rocky, and in your face. I just really like it. I really like the music video as well. It's it's very well done. I kind of get like uh, like after all these like uh, we kind of travelled the world a bit. We've had a bit of Spanish. We've had a bit of French. Um, we've had like a uh, there was another language going on somewhere else. Another song, but um, who knows? In fact, later on, there's a we get we get some more languages, but like. We go off, you pure British song, right? Yeah. <laughs> like, <laughs> he even says, like, you're a turkey twizzler. <laughs> yeah, which is no one outside of uh, England's going to get that. Uh, or UK, I guess. Uh, I, I've lost myself on my notes. Where am I? Oh, here I am. Yeah, so we got um, Slaves, which they do kind of punky music themselves. We've got Slow Tie, who's obviously 
fast talking, punky, I mean, slow ties there. Slow ties pretty great. I, I, I'm not. I'm a big fan of him, but I, I'm not like a massive fan. You know, I haven't quite stepped into the boundary of like where I'm like consistently listening to uh, his music, but it is really good. I've listened to his album quite a few times now. Um, and then, uh, yeah, and obviously, I feel like. Damon's kind of going back into like kind of like the Brit pop kind of takes a little yeah. bit, like, just like we could do so much better than this. I'm like, oh, you want to talk like that on the other song? What's going on here? <laughs> <laughs> put, put a guy in a room with slow time for an hour, and suddenly like <laughs> we, we yeah. get the park life <laughs> coming out. You know what I mean? Um, yeah, I mean, I, the the track is very like very high energy. I think it's something the only one on this that I would like you would dance to, mm. like the build up midway through the track is it's so well executed yeah yeah i think um here's the thing though so i had kind of a different inter- i had a slightly different interpretation to most people i think we can all agree it's kind of like you know like it's got a bit of criticisms about like fake celebrities and idols and stuff like that yeah. um but i kind of took it as like um it's more directly talking to the listener like when they say we can do so much better than this, like they're talking about the band and like you as the listener, like we can do better, we can be better, sort of thing. Mm. Um, some people are taking it as like they're just they're, they're saying that to like uh, other celebrities, oh, we can do better than I don't know. I, it's it's not quite the interpretation I got. I thought it was more about like um, looking down at other like. Uh, social media stars I've seen people talk about and celebrities when like you know what I mean no like you know it makes me sick to think you ain't happy in your skin I don't know why yeah, you'd say that to someone you, yeah. you, you don't like you know what I mean mm. um but then yeah the stuff about like but your arches they ain't golden and like uh, stuff like that um yeah what, what well, I, I, I also think it's like momentary bliss meaning uh the quick frills you get nowadays yeah so like using instagram momentary bliss of scrolling you post something you get like a like and then and then maybe you get a bad comment you're not happy in your skin yeah and and i don't know who rita is but it's it's uh got well, apparently a yeah. they are so someone asked them who's rita and i've got the quote here uh oh. i'm not sure it just says the group responded with so i don't know who the group was uh I don't know who the group is. I'm assuming it's Damon, but uh, mm. it's a lovely name to sing. I sort of think it's about instant gratification. It doesn't last, and there's a lot of that around today. So I don't know what ah. that. I don't know, you know, it's, a, it's a sort of similar thing to the song. Then it's about instant gratification. Yeah. to doing something. There's a Beatles song called "Lovely Rita." Apparently, I'm not. I'm not. I'm not too big on it. Don't tell anyone. I'm not. I don't know too much about the Beatles, but um, yeah. I won't. Don't worry. I won't tell anyone. Thank you. Um, but yeah, regardless of uh you know the deep themes in the song like it's very punchy the uh kind of like weird dis- not distorted but like the, the guitar is a little odd sounding like a little mm. almost out of tune um but yeah this is a fucking banger uh, from it start is, to finish is, yeah and I, I feel like a lot of people got into slow tie because of this and that's always good because he's probably if you're talking about british rappers so it's gonna there's quite a few of them on this album um He's definitely one of the more unique ones, just because of the way the way he talks and some of the words he uses, like the Turkey Twizzler line. Um, yeah, because <laughs> he says it with such conviction as well. I mean, that's that's a stand alone in the song. You're a Turkey Twizzler. You deserve score dinners. It makes me yeah. sick. It's, it's it's weird reading the lyrics because I can't hear the song when reading it, but you hear it when you listen. Yeah. The way he says it is very. It's it's just very well. Worded, mm. I guess, to yeah. fit the fit the uh, the tune of the song. You wouldn't it's... expect like uh, just the way he sounds. You wouldn't expect like these quite clever, like uh, yeah, you know, word plays and like word twisted and stuff like that, and just just kind of smart lyrics. You know, you expect kind of like a gobshite kind of like oh, you fucking mm. dancing, you know, all this. <laughs> I like the uh, the little like uh, like kind of throughout the albums, <laughs> throughout the song. Sorry, every now and again, this is a little like. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like just and again that that kind of makes me think of like a old like almost like Sex Pistols era like punk, you know mm-hmm. like uh, so I feel like this is a it's almost like a celebration of like a kind of like punky like a Brit poppy kind of stuff and obviously yeah. uh, slow ties at the kind of forefront of like kind of British punky music at the moment so you know great yeah. great stuff 
a um, lovely little song. I'd recommend this one. Well, I'd, Desolée recommend the most, but this one is a very close second to me. I didn't do a top five, but I guess off the cuff, I, I'll, I I'll just say like Desolée, Momentary Bliss, uh, Pac Man, mm. Dead Butterflies, uh, Pink Phantom, probably top maybe top five. Maybe, yeah, maybe. I just, I mean, really solid album. I mean, if it ended there. Uh, because there's a bunch of bonus tracks which we'll get into in a minute, but um, I think that the the lost cause, uh, lost chord, is on is on mine as well. Oh, okay, I, I do okay. like that one quite a lot. But that that does uh, not that I don't like dislike blah, 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 blah. not that I dislike some. I'm, I'm surprised there, but it is mm. good. It, I mean, every track is there's no filler. There's not a moment of like uh, like oh yeah. we, we had to get through this shit track. You know what I mean. Which well, I think the last album sounded more like a lot of filler. Yeah, yeah. No uh, skits because I know humans had like the stuff with um, what's his face? Uh, not uh, like going up. What, what's his name? Uh, um, because Gollum. <laughs> Gollum. <laughs> Who's the guy who plays Gollum? Andy Circus. Oh, is Gollum? In... I I didn't know that. He does. He does the little like talking bitch. You know the little skits. In humans, I'm pretty sure. Maybe, I mean, I could be horribly wrong. <laughs> You've got me down myself now. Talk to me um, about these tapes. So, I got a little Walkman at home. Mm-hmm. Fixed it up myself because I wanted to have it. You know, don't like judge a tape, me. Tape, tape walk. Yeah, right? little yes. walk. Yeah, tape Walkman. You know, Sony ones. Uh, not, not that great one. I just, I just I've seen it. It's decent. It's I've seen it. Yeah. I painted it. Uh, fixed the little thing at the. What's it called? The the belt. Um, and I. So I, I've been collecting. Tapes only, only a couple, um, and I thought, mm. oh, this one's out on tape. The song machine's out on tape, and so I'll, I'll buy, I'll buy it on tape because you know I bought Run the Jewels four, uh, and so I check out how much the tape is. It's like seven pounds, five, uh, eight pounds sort of time. Uh, but they split up all the tracks, so there's four, there's four different tapes you can get, each representing one of the characters. And right. so I got two Ds and Noodles because. Uh, 2D had the songs that I liked, and Noodle had. What did she have? She had. But uh, you, you talked to me about Dead Butterfly, and I hadn't listened to it yet, so I bought Noodle's one because it had Dead Butterfly. It didn't have many more on there, and it had kind of weird ones. So, I thought, so I'll go Noodle. What I thought with with because they've uploaded those to YouTube, but like they called them mixes. So there was like, oh, yeah. this is 2D's mix of the album. Mm. So I thought it was just the album, but just rearranged. I didn't realize there was tracks missing necessarily. Yeah. There okay. Is, yeah. But, but, whatever you know, I haven't actually listened to it on the Walkman. It's more of a collectible. But the the actual uh, thing, uh, physical items themselves are just just terrible. <laughs> oh really? <laughs> they they come in paper like boxes. They don't come in plastic boxes. Uh, they're printed, and you can kind of see like the the scan lines of of the ink. No, really. No, uh, yeah yeah <laughs> and oh it's, it's very like low resolution on everything and then when you go onto the album itself when you take out the sleeve it the, the sticker doesn't really fit the the you mean the actual tape sorry just to... yeah on the tape itself the sticker doesn't really fit the uh, uh the tape and right. my one hasn't been stuck on very well so it overlaps the top of the tape um and also just it, it, it's just not very nice looking um, oh. but you know it looks like it's kind of like retro it looks kind of cool in that way but uh, compared to like Run the Jewels 4 which was uh, like £8 as well and that came in a plastic box and it came with the album list in like in like the sleeve and and uh, it had a gold was it gold? it might have been gold yeah tape. I've got the, my tape didn't come in a little plastic box I just got a little I just got, do you mean it went by plastic do you mean like a as in just like a normal tape, just box, like a jewel you know, case. Oh right, right, okay. Sorry, I yeah, yeah. Because because like like song machine package. comes in a paper, a paper sleeve, and that's it. Oh, There's no plastic. Right. Um, yeah, and it's just like oh, it's quite cheap to buy tapes. It's quite cool to have them have them a little display. Um, and I, I'm disappointed, you know. So are just... they do the tapes? Are they like? Do they look different? Because I know the YouTube video had like pictures, and it they were kind of personalized by each band member. Yeah, they they are personalized. Yeah, but they, they still like it's not very high resolution. It's kind of washed out colors, and it could be stylistically. Oh. But then when you look at the tape itself, like the color of the tape is just one color. That's not washed out. That's just like a that's just a tape. Yeah. Um, yeah. So so if they're trying to go with that style, they didn't do a very good job on the plastic. Um, oh. I don't know how we've turned this into an unboxing, but. 
well, I mean, no, <laughs> but, I mean, I mean, oh, the, it's that's a sh- real big shame. And the, the scan hmm. lines are. I mean, that's that's it's terrible. <laughs> it's difficult to see, but you can see like it is. Yeah, it's just it's just discolored and not in a stylistic way. But but the personalization on the tapes are quite cool. Like two of these, they're not serious. Uh, Noodles got like you know some Japanese writing on. I don't know, and some like little cat stickers on there, and then. Tootie's got um, some stickers, and he's got he's named it. I hope you like it, and Tootie <laughs> signed it. Um, yeah, so so the personalization's good. It's just I think that probably the people they outsource it to just didn't do a very good job. That is a shame. Um, yeah, the vinyl. Um, I I will say one little. There's a small scratch on the vinyl. I've still got the packaging. If it's is um, scratched, I haven't actually put it in the record player yet because um, hmm. it's not that big of a deal on records. Um, it is. It feels like a super collector, but yeah, it's it's it's, it's minuscule. Anyway, forget about that. Um, but I got the Dulux vinyl. I, d- I did spend uh, about fifty bones on it, but you know, let's. Uh, oh, a pretty penny. Well, I, so there was the normal vinyl, and there was like a Dulux one. I was like, yeah, fuck it, this album's great. I'm getting the the squanky edition. And uh, well, yeah, that means you got momentary bliss, uh, not momentary bliss, Desolé extended. I, you dummy. I think I do. Yeah, I don't actually know. I, I assume I do, but um. Well, when, sorry, when I say it was like a, there was the normal vinyl, which is just like the album, and then this one had like extra gubbins in it and whatnot. Um, so it comes in this nice like fold. It's almost like a book, and it's got like a art book in the middle of all the single art and stuff like that. That's cool. Um, also comes with a CD. I assume it's just the album oh, yeah? again on CD, but I don't actually know because <laughs> it didn't say it was going to come with a CD, but there it is. Um, but that's in and that's in there as well. And then it's got some like. Um, it's got three little postcards, or well, not postcards, sorry, like a, about the size of uh, a record, sort of like the record artwork. Mm. Three little sheets of, uh, it's the Desolé artwork, the uh, Momentary Bliss artwork, I'm pretty sure, and the, I might have that wrong, actually. It's it's the, Des- it's definitely Desolé, because it's wearing her on the boat. Yeah, the boat, yeah. And then there's one where they're in front of uh, Kong Studios, and then there's the Aries one where they're, in the, they're by the car and... Uh, mm. Russell's beating up uh, Murdoch. Um, mm. So yeah, I mean, and yeah, and it's all nicely packaged. It looks great. There's no scan lines. There's no, <laughs> there's no corners cut. Uh, oh no! So I actually think, uh, thinking about it, when I first, I don't actually, I didn't know the album was out until I saw an ad for it on uh, Instagram. Yeah, I didn't know it was out. No, I just, I saw it on Spotify. It just said, it said, oh, uh, really? um, recommended to you. It was like, it just put a random song from the. I think it was like. It was one of the ones that didn't have a music video. It was like uh, mm. the one with it was fucking. It was like Dead Butterflies or something. It was just like, oh, here's Dead Butterflies. I was like, what? <laughs> and then I went view album, and I was like, oh, that, that, there's a whole album here. Yeah, but I, I saw an ad on Instagram that was like, oh, I, I, I always get Grillers ads on Instagram. I'm not sure why. Um, <laughs> to go to their store to buy stuff. It's like, oh, you could buy the album or whatever. I was like, oh, so I clicked on it, and I went to go look for the cassettes, and they're all sold out. And so I was like, oh, oh okay. bummer. And then. Like a week later, or maybe less than a week later, I got another ad, same sort of thing, and I was like, oh, I'll check again. Um, and then they were back in stock, so that's probably why the quality is so low. Maybe they rushed it because they didn't. Yeah. yeah. I feel like people, because they, they're customized, people probably might have gotten them just purely because of that. Mm. Like people that maybe not necessarily collecting music would have been interested in, in something like that. Yeah. I mean, w- w- originally I went and tried to put one cassette in my basket instead of it sold out. But oh. then when I tried it again the other day, it said I could put all four of them in my basket. And then I went into my basket and then removed two. So I don't know if I broke the system or it was just <laughs> rushed out to, to, to meet the order. Um, but I did get the... How much, um, how much were they, sorry? Eight quid each? It was like seven fifty, I think. Oh, okay. Uh, it's not bad. And I think... I suppose I'd... it makes sense they sold out quite quick. Cause if you're like not really into music collecting, you're like, oh, seven quid for like a... A mm. cool collectible thing with gorillas, a band I like. Yeah, you know. Yeah, no, I, I see it, yeah. I suppose to like um, 50 quid or 30 quid, how much a vinyl is. Yeah, it's good. I hope people do do that because um, it's good to support the people you like, and even yes. if you don't have the media to play. I mean, everyone's. Whoever, if you don't have Spotify, I guess you'd buy physical media, but Spotify's like. It, uh, there's no Sp- point in me buying these at all because I have Spotify. Well, Spotify doesn't really pay the art. They pay the artist like 50p for like yeah. a billion streams or something ridiculous. So like, it's always good to like support the bands you like. And uh, mm. 
they're there or <laughs> we, we might be go, going to see them live maybe yeah if we, we can get these tickets the, um, what's it called the club what was it the, the pre-book friend? tickets or something like that but it's called like something like friend club or something like that yeah so when you buy something from the store I think you it's two pounds um, yeah. and so you get that if you pay two pounds so you get pre-ordered tickets for seeing them live early um I think it's tomorrow, actually, so it might be midnight tonight. I don't know. I mean, oh, that's God. another conversation. That's we'll an we'll look into that in a bit. Um, yeah. Before we go completely off track, let's... Uh, yeah. We'll, let's talk about these extra tracks. Y- yes. What, what do you think about this? What would you, oh, I can talk about it if you don't have any, any anything to say, but this um, opium track, this by Earth Gang. I don't have much to say about it. I, mean, I, I was listening to it earlier, but there's nothing that really stood out. It was quite a long intro. I remember mm. that. Yeah, it's. Uh, I really don't like the intro. Uh, when I, so when I first listened to the album, like the, I'd want to say the first like five listens of the album, I didn't realize these were bonus tracks. I thought it was mm. just a long album. Um, so when this song came on after Momentary Bliss, I was like, "What the fuck is this?" And like, <laughs> it's got this like three minute long intro. It's really, it really is quite long. Um, but once the song gets going. Um, I've only ever seen Earth Gang in features. Um, I was under the impression Earth Gang was a band, but maybe it's just a, a man. Uh, oh no, hip hop duo it says here. Uh, well, whatever. Um, yeah, once they actually get into it, like the dunna 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 kind of like flow, I, I quite mm. liked it once it um, uh, got into it. Uh, but yeah, it's it's that intro is <laughs> absurd. There's no reason this track needs to be six minutes long, and maybe if it was a mainline track, they would have trimmed it down or something. But um, yeah, it doesn't quite work. But next yeah, we got. Too... Oops, sorry. Well, go uh, I was going to say it's just it's two minutes and forty seconds. The intro. I just checked check it out now, um, and that's when it gets into the song after two minutes and forty. And seconds. you look at like chalk tablet towers and the valley of the pagans are three minutes long for their entirety. So like, and it's not like. An intro that changes. It's just like a build up, a slow yeah. build up of, of similar sounding things. It's just not interesting, really. I mean, it, yeah. it, it, it's not it's not terrible. Um, it's just, yeah, I can see why it's, it's been relegated into bonus track territory, I guess. Mm. Uh, this uh, Joan as the Police, was it Simplicity with Joan as Policewoman? Someone I've never heard of. I don't uh, know as well. Don't have much to say about the song. Uh, I, I, it's all right. the the guitar the way they they do the electric guitar it just reminds me of momentary bliss. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I can see that. I said uh, it's it's a little weirdly mixed, um, and mm. not, which is weird for this album in particular. Maybe it's just not up to the standards of every other song in this album. Like that, every other song sounds ridiculously well mixed. Um, yeah, a little empty. I just wasn't too sure on it. Um, but again, uh, <laughs> a bonus track, I guess. Yeah, no, I agree with the emptiness. Yeah, it's kind of like very subdued. Yeah. Um, then we've got this Severed Head featuring Gold Link, an unknown mortal orchestra. And I've heard Gold Link before, and I'm not a huge fan of him. Um, uh, let me just go through the song because once again, again, once I was listening to this album the first few times, I was like, man, these, tra- these tracks ain't it. They ain't that hot. Yeah. <laughs> 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 and, uh, I, mean, I don't hate them or anything, but. It's yeah, it's just kind of like a bit messy, you know. Yeah, uh, there's nothing really I've I've got to say. Yeah, Gold yeah. Goldlink's verse. Um, he has this phrase like, I'm in the, da, 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 da. and there's a Kendrick song which uses that exact same flow, and I can't oh, remember no. what song it is. I was trying <laughs> to find it. Uh, I think it's from Damn. I'm not sure, but there's just, there's definitely because I was because like, the first time I heard it, I was like, is this Kendrick? I was like, no, it's not Kendrick. Cause it doesn't sound like Kendrick. <laughs> I was like, but it does. It kind of sounds like it's the way he 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 has the same flow, and mm. uh, I don't know, it, 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 whatever. Uh, my favorite my favorite bonus track is um this uh, with love to an ex song with Moonchild uh, Sonali. Uh, she has this kind of like um quite unique flow and like way of talking, and she uh, I'm not quite mm. sure what language she uses, but she dips into this uh, language every now and again. Um, yeah, she's got a cool, there's a troll called Drumbeat that kind of goes with her vocals quite well. Yeah, yeah. Um, just her, del- yeah, and her delivery, and uh, the song's got this quite like moody kind of like uh, feel into it, and I quite like it. And uh, it's just, it's a shame that um, maybe with a bit of tweak in it could have been 
maybe on the mainline album or something like that. Mm. Um, but maybe they just couldn't find a way to make it work. I'm not too sure. Um, and then this, uh, this, I feel like there's a running theme here of, uh, I've never really been a big fan of JPEG Mafia, and uh, that he he is um, a really popular uh, like rapper in like the underground kind of community, as it were. Uh, yeah. And it, I don't know, he's he's never clicked for me, and he doesn't click for me here. And I'd say he doesn't. He he's more of an experimental kind of uh, rapper, and he's on this quite like, a, like yeah poppy kind of song, and it it doesn't quite work for me. Well, I think I've lost. I think you. this was the song. Yeah, I lost you for a second, but I'm back. I'm back with a vengeance here because I'm about to say when I was um when I was listening to this, I was when I was listening to the bonus tracks specifically. I was cooking dinner, um, All right. and this is the one that kind of made me think, oh, cyberpunky because it's very like it's got a lot of um synth in it. Well, not a lot, but it's got some of it, and it's got the auto tuned. Yeah, and this is the one that kind of like made me go, oh yeah, this could be on the radio. Um, could be driving around a cyberpunk city. It's, it's, got, it's quite stuff, a but... poppy kind of eighties. Yeah, I, mm. I feel like people might like this one quite a bit, but it, 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 I, JPEG Mafia just does not work for me, and I don't know what it is. I'm sorry if you're if you're a JPEG Mafia fan out there, but <laughs> it just doesn't mm. doesn't click with me. I'm sorry. Yeah. Uh, and uh, this uh, how far song with um, Skepta and. Uh, Tony Allen, and it was released early because of when Tony Allen uh, sadly passed away earlier on in the year. Oh yeah, I remember um, this one. Yeah, it's a uh, when I first listened, I was like, "Oh, this song's I'm not too, I'm not too keen on it." But um, it's grown on me a bit, and I think Skepta's got some pretty good lyrics on it as well. Uh, out of all the bonus tracks, uh, it's definitely just below a uh, Moonchild Sonali song, um, mm. like the Wagwan Brother. Like, yeah, yeah. yeah, I do like that. I mean, it's it does definitely stand out. Um, but it's it seems like it's missing some something. Yeah, and I'm not sure uh, what happened with these bonus tracks. You know what I mean? Mm. I mean, I guess I'm glad they're here, but were they like tracks that they just didn't work? Were they like just I don't I don't understand how they came to be. Were they like you know what I mean? I just have so many questions because it's not like this album had to come out on uh, in October, right? They could have delayed mm. it and fleshed the songs out, but maybe they just felt like, oh, we can't. Or maybe they felt like, oh, come in for an hour, we're going to do a quick, like, just little fun bonus track. Like, was that the intention from the beginning? I don't, I just don't know. I, I think it might be just, they they got the, 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 what they probably do is they go, oh, we're going to make Song Machine. These are the people that are going to be on Song Machine. They try and get them. And then this is now an album now because we have all these artists. Yeah. And then when they have all the songs... And they, they do it as a creative process. There's some they left out that's like, we could spend more time uh, working on these tracks, or we could move on, release the album, and then we could do another, you know, another yeah. album. Um, and so uh, sometimes I think you just have to let go of stuff. I mean, creatively, you just have to sometimes it's done. There's nothing more to do. Yeah, I don't know what else you could add to some of these as well, but yeah, mm. it's just weird to me to think like, like did they record the Earth Gang song at Opium, and then the next day they're like, "Oh, well, let's let's give a let's try this Desolation song out." You know what I mean? I just, mm. <laughs> I just have a lot. Of, I like the album a lot. Don't get me wrong. I just have a lot of questions about how it was made, and I think maybe like a behind the scenes look would. Uh, I think there is some behind the scenes stuff on YouTube. Um, yeah, so I have to check that out at some point. Just to it, it's to... very interesting how they would make an album with so many people. Yeah, I, I, it would be really. Like a documentary on this would be so fascinating. Yeah, yeah. Just even if it was like, I don't know, like stuff like Demons, like, oh, I want to get this person in to do a song. You just record a little bit of them just chatting about and then, like, you know, getting into it, making the song. I don't know. Just a little, mm. little bit of insight. I don't know. But maybe they one don't. One of my. To... Sorry, go on. I was going to say, just one of my favorite videos on YouTube is, um, is when they get. I've forgotten who the guitarist is, but they get. Uh, they're doing the Halo 2 soundtrack and they get the, the you know i mean people might not know but in halo 2 there's the there's the guitar like the solo in the main theme of of the track mm. and they get the the guy in to do the recording of um of the solo and it's, it's just him spitting it's just him doing a solo crazily and, they, and you see um 
what's his name, Marty O'Donnell, just say, oh, this is how it should sound, and they just do it. And then you hear in like the video, it's quite a long video, but individual parts that are in, you know that's in the game. And it's very <laughs> interesting to see in that sort of documentary, in this that, that sort of style where they just show the creative process, like them in the recording studio, would be really interesting. Yeah. I think some of it might come down to like... Uh... Like maybe uh, with momentary bliss, maybe like Damon's had an easier time conveying to Slow Tie what he wanted from the song, and Slow Tie had some interesting ideas. Hmm. Then maybe some of the guys in the bonus track, not set, not slagging them off or anything, but maybe you know sometimes the chemistry is just not there, right? So like, yeah, maybe it's just a case of that. But um, yeah, overall, uh, probably one of my favorite albums of the year. Um, yeah, and I it's agree. for for as rough of a, of a year as fucking. Hell, let me start saying that again as. Rough of a year as, as it's been for music. Um, I mean, we've got RTJ4, we've got Momentary Bliss, and there's a few other albums that I'm a big fan of as well. It could it could have. I'm glad that we got like a big meaty Gorillaz album, like uh, yeah. especially because Gorillaz albums are a little bit spaced between each other. Um, but yeah, hope yeah. season two, hopefully, is yeah. too far around the corner. Hopefully. It's probably. I mean, calling it seasons means it seems like it's going to be quicker. Uh, yeah. to come out so maybe next year we'll see another one another, another song machine it's hard to I imagine the plan was maybe do season one then tour like and perform yeah. those songs but obviously in this current uh, the current climate of things might be harder to do so I guess we'll we'll wait and see um, but yeah this is uh, obviously both of us are, have been <laughs> saying we love I don't think there was a single song we really disliked really there's a few songs yeah. I think uh Maybe one some or two songs, but no, but I like all of them. There's no song I'm like, ugh. Like, yeah, some of the bonus tracks are a bit off, but yeah, but yeah I agree. It's a very good album, um, and I think it's a big step up from their last one. Uh, mm. New Days, was it? Uh, now, um, now. Oh, now. What's New Days? Uh, you're the you're Demon, Demon Days, days. I guess. The, the New Days. Just to... <laughs> the New Days is now. We're living in the New Days. We're living and in the New Days. We'll where can we days... Where can we see more uh, Luke Zogon? Uh, I don't know. You could you could go on, you could go onto video show games on YouTube, but also you could you could check out Twitter. I'll post the pictures of the uh, cassettes, mm, and you can judge good. them yourself. Uh, it's uh, at Zogon two nine four zero. I'm not going to spell it. You can figure it out. I'll put it on screen or in, I'll put it in the description something like that. Um, but yeah, thanks. Well, what I've been yeah, thinking. Thanks of, for having me on. That's all right. I've got a. Uh, I'll tell you about it in a minute, but I've got a few plans down the pipeline, so this might not be Ooh. the last what kind of thing you see of this. Um, Alright, see you guys next time. See ya.